As the answer to the questions are yours, I go to the Bible, God's holy word to find answers. And thank you once again for the good questions you have sent and that I am able to use today. Question number one. Do Genesis 6.19 and Genesis 7.2 contradict each other? The, the brief answer is no, they do not. Noah was told in chapter 6 to save two of each animal, that is lions and horses and giraffes and so on. But in chapter 7, he is told about the clean animals and he was to save seven of each of them in the ark that he had built. Now Leviticus chapter 11 explains the difference between a clean and an unclean animal. Cattle and sheep, of course, are clean to the Jewish people because they not only split the hoof, but also they chew the cud, whereas other animals do not. There is no contradiction here. God forbade the eating of much seafood and of pigs and of camels, for example, but cloven hoofs and chewing the cud made them okay. When you come into the New Testament, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 4 and 5, you discover that in the day of grace in our day, that everything God created is, is all right to, to partake of if it be received with gratitude and with prayer. And now question number two for today, is baptism for the dead good? Is Jesus our brother? Well, the answer to both questions is yes. Baptism is good, and uh, also Jesus is our, our brother. But the Bible had knows, knows nothing about proxy baptism, where you bap are baptized in the place of an old uncle that lived a hundred years ago, and he wasn't baptized, and so somehow he's given credit and he gets into heaven on the basis of what you do. Uh, there's only one reference to baptism, and that is uh, in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 29, and it's not talking about proxy baptism. It's talking about you wanting to meet a loved one in heaven. You know you have to trust in Jesus to have eternal life, and so you go to the pastor and ask him to baptize you so that you can have assurance and the world can know that you are a child of God. Now the second question has to do with Jesus being our brother. Hebrews chapter 2 in two places talks about him being our elder brother in the family of God. This is Bible language and Jesus is our brother. We will see him and be like him for we shall see him, thank God, as he is. And now question number three for today. How did the author of Job learn about Job 1, 6 and Job 2, verse 1? Well, uh, those two passages refer to meetings in heaven, I take it, where God is present and uh, uh, he talks to Satan and uh, God says, have you considered my servant Job? Well, how did Job find out about that? Uh, the Bible says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God, 2 Timothy 3.16, and so we just take it by faith that God has kept his word from error. And we believe that Job somehow got that information. Maybe God gave him a dream. Maybe God revealed it directly to him. I do not know. The Bible doesn't say. But uh, certainly God did tell the author of Job 
of that event and who the author of Job really was, I'm not sure. Thank you so very much for these good questions. I trust the answers have been helpful. If you have a question you'd like me to use on the Bible as the answer, please write it out, send it to me. I'll be delighted to hear from you. I'll get to your question on the air just as quickly as I can. And when you write, all the address you need is simply Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba. And the code is R3C2H6. Let's listen now to the trio. Heaven will surely be worth it all.